Hello and welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. Today we'll talk about risk-based monitoring in clinical research. More after the intro. Clinical research associates play a vital role in the clinical research process. They are responsible for ensuring that clinical trials are conducted in compliance with the study protocol, applicable regulations, and ethical principles. One of the most critical tasks performed by clinical research associates is monitoring, which involves the regular review and verification of trial-related activities, data, and documents to ensure patient safety and data integrity. Given the increasing complexity and size of clinical trials, traditional monitoring methods can be time-consuming and resource-intensive. To address these challenges, a new monitoring strategy called risk-based monitoring has emerged in recent years. This video aims to provide beginner CRA and individuals new to clinical research with a comprehensive understanding of RBM in clinical research. But what is the definition of risk-based monitoring? Risk-based monitoring is a dynamic and adaptive approach to clinical trial monitoring that focuses on identifying, assessing, and mitigating risks to patient safety and data integrity. Unlike traditional monitoring methods, which often involve 100% source data verification, risk-based monitoring uses a targeted and flexible approach to allocate monitoring resources based on the specific risks identified for each study. The concept of risk-based monitoring was first introduced by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in their 2011 guidance document titled A Risk-Based Approach to Monitoring. This guidance encouraged sponsors to develop risk-based monitoring strategies that prioritize resources on higher-risk aspects of clinical trials. The European Medicines Agency also released similar guidance on risk-based approaches to quality management in 2013. Since then, there has been growing interest in adopting risk-based monitoring strategies in clinical research with various organizations providing guidance and tools to support its implementation. For example, the International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use released an updated version of their Good Clinical Practice Guidelines in 2016, known as ICH-E6R2, which includes a greater emphasis on risk-based quality management, including risk-based monitoring, but what are the key elements of a risk-based monitoring approach? The RBM approach typically involves the following key elements. 1. Risk assessment. This is the process of identifying and evaluating potential risks to patient safety and data integrity in a clinical trial. It involves both a proactive assessment of potential risks before the trial starts and an ongoing evaluation of risks throughout the trial. 2. Mitigation. Once risks have been identified and assessed, appropriate risk mitigation strategies are developed to prevent or minimize their impact on the trial. These strategies may include changes to study design, protocol, or monitoring plan. 3. Risk-based monitoring plan. This is a detailed plan outlining the monitoring activities that will be performed during the trial based on the identified risks it specifies the type, frequency, and intensity of monitoring activities for each study site and data element. 4. Centralized monitoring. In addition to traditional on-site monitoring activities, RBM often involves centralized monitoring, where data is remotely reviewed and analyzed to identify trends, inconsistencies, or potential issues that may require further investigation. 5. Adaptive monitoring. As the trial progresses and new information becomes available, the monitoring plan may be adjusted to address any changes in risks or emerging issues. This flexibility allows for a more efficient use of resources and ensures that monitoring efforts are focused where they are most needed. What is the importance of RBM in clinical research? One ensuring patient safety and data integrity. 
One of the primary goals of RBM is to protect the rights, safety, and well-being of trial participants while ensuring the accuracy and reliability of trial data. By focusing on the most significant risks to patient safety and data integrity, RBM enables clinical research associates to prioritize their efforts on the critical aspects of the trial. 2. Efficient use of resources in clinical research. Traditional monitoring methods can be resource-intensive, requiring significant time and effort from clinical research associates and study sites. RBM allows for a more efficient allocation of resources by targeting monitoring activities based on risk, reducing the need for 100% source data verification, and leveraging centralized monitoring techniques. This not only reduces the burden on clinical research associates and study sites, but also enables sponsors to conduct trials more cost-effectively. 3. Improved Quality and Compliance RBM promotes a proactive approach to quality management, encouraging sponsors, clinical research associates, and study sites to identify and address potential issues before they become problems. This proactive approach helps to ensure that clinical trials are conducted in compliance with regulatory requirements and ethical principles, ultimately improving the overall quality of clinical research. In conclusion, risk-based monitoring is an innovative monitoring strategy that offers numerous benefits for clinical research, including improved patient safety, data integrity, and efficient resource allocation. As a beginner clinical research associates or someone new to clinical research, it is essential to understand the principles and processes underlying RBM to effectively implement this approach in your clinical trials. By adopting risk-based monitoring strategies, you can contribute to improving the overall quality and efficiency of clinical research, ultimately benefiting patients and advancing medical knowledge. Thank you for watching our video and we hope that you found it informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content on clinical research. See you next time.